in this session at the Writers Craft Summit, I have Nathan Frischat. Nathan, welcome to the summit. Hello. Thank you for having me. So in this session, we're going to be zeroing in on dialogue. And as I mentioned before we started, something I find kind of funny about dialogue is a lot of people that I've worked with often think they're really good at dialogue. They'll say, oh, I, I struggle with narration or whatever, but my dialogue is spot on. And often I think um, <laughs> that dialogue that they think is great can really be improved upon. So hopefully in this session, we can dig into some ways that people can take a look at their dialogue from a different angle and, and figure out ways to maybe improve it. Sounds good. So you are a novelist, but you also have a background as an illustrator and a comic book writer. And obviously in comic books, dialogue can carry a lot of the narrative weight, perhaps more so arguably than in a novel, I would think. But anyway, I thought that would be a good place for us to start. Tell us about the role dialogue plays in comic books, but also in novels and what you've learned through working in both mediums. So, um, actually, I, I do my background is primarily in comic books. I have a bachelor's in sequential arts. Um, and dialogue is absolutely essential for comic books. Uh, it is absolutely the, the sorry, I'm, I'm trying to formulate the, you don't necessarily need dialogue in a comic book, but there's still, you know, something happening that is like dialogue. Uh, whether or not you have speech bubbles or, or you know, narration squares. Um, and dialogue in comic books has to be chopped down to the smallest it can be because just physically speaking, text takes up room on a panel. So you cannot have any extraneous words in there. You have to boil it down to the essential of what you're trying to say with dialogue. And this is something that uh, comic books has really taught me as an author. Uh, I think people, because we have more room on the page, uh, you know, will sometimes go into lengthy dialogue because we think it shows something about our characters and we keep going and dialogue feels like action because it is live. It's the most action you can have, right? It's directly the characters talking right there. Um, but just because it's going on doesn't mean that there's something actually happening. So we think about dialogue as conversations between characters. And the thing about a conversation is it's so long. I defy you to tape a conversation you're having with a friend at any point and listen back to it, to like get across maybe one or two bits of information. You're going to talk for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a huge amount of time. 20 minutes like in script pages, in you know, like TV script, it's 20 pages of dialogue. So, you know, you're, First of all, your meaning and your sense can get lost in all of those words. And second of all, you're not going to keep your readers interested for that long. You're going to get repetitive. So the art and dialogue is really finding the essence of what you're trying to say and then making it sound like it's just people talking. I love that. It didn't occur to me that that idea of dialogue actually taking up physical on the space on the page would be the takeaway but it makes so much sense now because i think that one is that is one of the biggest mistakes people make is everything becomes a speech <laughs> when they're writing their novel and no one says something quippy like everything is this long drawn out soliloquy and um as you said there's so many ways that that can go wrong Definitely. Um, and and one of them is you end up losing your character's voice. If you have to trim down to the exact thing that they're saying that gets your point across, you also have to get their voice exactly right. You know, you have to plan your contractions and plan your, your sentence structure uh, to really reflect how they're talking. And in in when you start having these long speeches, you often have dialogue that starts sounding exactly like your narration. And then not only is it not, you know, as compelling and your meaning can be lost, but also you start wondering who's talking and their voice gets lost in your nar narrative voice. And you don't get that sense of personality from the speech anymore. Oh, 
that's so interesting. I'd never even thought of that, that idea that, you know, I've always thought of dialogue as breaking up the narration so we don't look at a big block of text because nobody, nobody turns a page in a novel and is like, oh, great, a page of description with no dialogue, <laughs> right? But it, it's so true, right? When we start having these giant speeches, it just becomes narration. Yeah. And I think it's interesting, too, coming from this idea of comic books where images don't – meaning isn't just in the image alone, but meaning is in the two images uh, opposed to one another and what happens in the gutter in between the two images, mm -hmm. right? And I think in dialogue in a novel format, a lot of the meaning comes through that exchange of two characters speaking to one another. And so when you have a gi big, giant speech, again – you're losing that that back and forth dynamic and that conflict and and the magic that comes from a two opposing points of view or two different things merging to form the meaning of a, a single experience. Exactly, absolutely. And what also happens is you lose you lose a lot of of impact on your reader because the choice of exposing something via dialogue is that often it gets emotional. It gets very emotional in, in how you're exposing something. But it, a character, you know, uttering out a big block of text, like, take it up, read it out loud. Look at how long it takes. Really? No one interrupts him in all that time? Uh, must not have an impact on them. You know, they're just listening quietly. Like, for what? 30 seconds? 30 seconds is a huge amount of time. Try saying something for 30 seconds continuously to your spouse. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the challenges for me interviewing people is like, do you know how hard it is for me to just shut up and let people talk sometimes? <laughs> because in real life, we don't do that. In real life, we talk over one another, we interrupt one another, and we speak and don't finish our sentences, or we have to speak half an idea and jump to another, right? And, and so as you said, we don't want to replicate that exactly on the page, but at the yeah. same time, you do want to capture that, like that idea of breath. Like you were saying, when you read yeah. it aloud, if you can't read it without running out of breath, then your character wouldn't be able to say it without running out of breath. Exactly. And, and you want to have that authenticity exactly to, to sound like dialogue. You know, you, you don't want it to sound like someone reading a page from a book you want it to sound like a back and forth because in real life there is a back and forth even people who talk very 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 long amounts of times you know they'll have they'll probably have conversations with people who are talking at the same time as they are so in in when you're looking at a book if it's not going quickly back and forth if you're doing more than like two or maybe three sentences per reply and i'm talking about sentences that have like maybe maximum two clauses like short sentences if if you're not if you're doing any more than that it feels like a speech and speeches do happen but you know they shouldn't be the norm yeah so what about that idea of dialogue tag so we were talking about often dialogue is expressing emotion there's advice that goes both ways on whether you want to use ly adverbs like he said emotionally or he exclaimed or do you just say he said i have a very specific take on things in my writing i'm curious what's your take on those sorts of dialogue tags um, so I don't have a very strong opinion of ly adverbs. Um, you know, people people use them. You have all sorts of different narration voice, like narrative voices that you can have. If you're doing a, a first person stream of consciousness, and if you're doing like a third person mission, you're not gonna have the same expectations as to how you are doing you know your dialogue tags your narration and stuff like that you're not going to have the same grammatical expectations for example if, uh, if you're doing you know the lord of the rings where it's like a, an omniscient voice that's supposed to sound like very erudite or if you're, you're narrating like you know you're looking at something like catcher in the rye um you have very very different expectations so for me adverbs are kind of like it depends on what you're going for um but as far as dialogue tags i have seen people overuse them and i've seen people not use them at all to uh, very like not very good results 
Um, so and when you when you say not using them all, you just mean going line of dialogue, line of dialogue. Oh, yeah, line of dialogue, line of dialogue. Line of dialogue. Yeah. Um, which you know, if if you have very strong skills at, um, you know, carrying a personality, and you have people who talk in very distinct manners, um, and you you manage to intersperse your dialogue with a lot of actions to present, you know, you link an action to the line of dialogue to like, sort of suggest who's speaking, you can get away with it, but most of the time. If if you're doing dialogue with more than two people, or or two people who have a very similar background, education, um, you know, way of expression, you're you're gonna get confused as a reader if you're looking at just back and forth and who's talking right now. And so you want to use them. You want to use them um, sparingly for sure. You don't want to go in huge, like, you know, you don't want to say he said, she said every single line uh, that does get repetitive, but there's nothing wrong with saying he said four times in a conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I agree completely. Agree. And um, if you are saying he said too many times, just have him smoke a cigarette instead. <laughs> you know? Exactly. The sun is blue. He he sucked uh, and blew out his smoke or his pipe, right? Gandalf blew a pipe and then continued narrating where they need to go on the map or whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. What about that idea of layering dialogue scenes with action as well, so it's not just two heads floating in a black room talking to one another? Well, that's that's a huge thing that comics taught me, um, because you do comics to show something visually, and two little floating heads with bubbles for pages on end – Nobody wants to see that. You're just going to get the novel or, or the script, or you're going to want to see it on TV. Even people, you know, you're, look at television. You don't see just two heads talking. Even when it's a news show or a talk show, they cut those with images and, and with, like, you know, videos of other things and graphics. They I feel know like I need to, like, edit in some, like, dancing cats or something <laughs> right here right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, different expectations for podcasts. <laughs> I always think of this idea of um of like a date scene where like your natural instinct might be like, oh, they're having coffee. And I, I'm always like, okay, what if they have the exact same conversation only they're on mountain bikes? Right? Like it just it yeah. ups the interest of everything. It's 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 like that's the com that's the superhero way of doing things, right? Like, why just have a conversation when you could like punch someone to the moon and have a conversation with <laughs> What about if you, are, if you are writing romance, for example, and you, you do want to have that date, you do want to have that, that thing that feels like a rom-com, my recommendation is visualize it to the very last detail. Look at it as if you're looking at a screen. What? Where does the, the camera focus? Is she looking at her phone? Are they, you know, that putting sugar in their coffee? Are they eating something or other? You know, it's, it's very... Um, if you see it visually, and this is the exercise that writing graphic novels has forced me through, is you have to picture what's going on in the picture. You have to show something. And and if you think about your books really visually, it, it's not hard to come up with actions. We don't ever just sit and talk. People fidget with things all the time. You know, you talk with, with your spouse in the kitchen, you're going to get up and look through the fridge. You're, you're going to plan what you're having for dinner. You're going to maybe take out some meat to thaw. There's always something to do, and we always do something. Absolutely. What about dialogue that's too on the nose? I know this is something you and I have seen a lot in our work with clients, our editing work and things. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, so, yeah, dialogue that's a little bit too on the nose. There's a lot of ways that you can discuss this. There's, um, you know, you can go into extremes when you're trying to uh, represent something like dialects and, uh, and, and particular ways of talking and you know, you want you want what you write to be legible, and you want also, if if especially especially if you are doing this for a culture that's not your own, uh, you definitely want to get sensitivity readers involved um, with this, uh, because there is a lot of ways that this can go wrong um, for you. So uh, there's also um, I keep thinking back to a. a really great panel from Scott McLeod's uh, 
I can't remember if it's understanding comics or uh, reading or, or making comics. I think it's understanding comics, but it's, you know, this panel of, um, uh, it's a square and it's the superhero punching a dude. And the superhero says, I punch you with my mighty fist. And then the narration says, and he punched the evil. And, and you know, it's such a good illustration of, of this. Like, sometimes you can overdo it with exposition. And, like, if you said something already in, in your narration, you don't need to say it again in dialogue. And if you say something in dialogue, you don't need to repeat it four times in the conversation. Yeah. Because people wouldn't do that. Right. It, it's like, and then they approached the submarine and got onto the submarine. Boy, this is a big submarine, they said. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, exactly. We get it. They're on a submarine. Right. We get it. We get it. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think when we were talking about this idea of authenticity and whatnot, we very rarely in life just come out and say what we want or what we mean or what we think of someone. But so much of our dialogue in real life is you know, working on multiple levels or we're afraid to come out and admit what we really think or what we, and so that's a mistake I see a lot is, is just these characters who, they're all Cordelia from Buffy, right? They all just say <laughs> what they think. And like, you know, that works for Cordelia, but you know, there's a lot of other um, people out there who, who are going to say the complete opposite maybe of what they actually think or actually want. And we want to see that in dialogue in a novel. You know what, this is This is so funny that you mentioned Cordelia because I know the scene that you're talking about, it's that episode where Buffy hears thoughts. Right. I actually yeah. use that scene to teach dialogue to my students when I used to teach creative writing because it's so genius. Um, and, and just, I think, I think I'm gonna just talk a little bit about that scene if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, so you have, you have a few characters and Buffy, the main character can suddenly hear people's thoughts and she can hear everybody, everybody's thinking. So Cordelia, who is, um, you know, a vapid kind of shallow character in, in this series, uh, you know, immediately thinks, oh, this is boring, I wanna go home. And immediately says, oh, this is boring, I wanna go home. Uh, and then you have Willow, her best friend, who says something supportive and encouraging, and we can't actually hear what she says because you're, you hear her thinking very loudly over thought, oh, well, what if, you know, Buffy gets too interesting, um, she won't need me anymore, her, all her insecurities are coming out. And you can really see how some people, they're saying something, that's not what they mean, that's what they think they have to say. And most people do that. That's how we learn to communicate. And then you have Oz, who's a character who doesn't say much at all, and he has this huge thought process of like, if Buffy can hear us, then we are, we are Buffy. So is Buffy the world? And like this huge thing, and he says, "Huh." You know, so it's it's very. You have to think about what your character wants for sure but you also have to think about would they say that how would they say that you know what are they socialized to say yeah it's like so you've got the scene functioning you're as a writer you're always juggling all these balls right so one ball is like they're on a date the other ball is like the date is mountain biking downhill the other ball is what how do they externally present themselves to the world and what has their uh, you know the situation that the fact that they're on a date and what has their upbringing what is their the culture that they're in and all that dictates the way they speak externally but then they have an internal world that should ideally or in most cases is going to be different from that external world that they are actually articulate in their language Absolutely. And, and it's something that you really have to, to consider. And some people, some people are, you know, will blurt out things that are not appropriate. They'll blurt out everything that comes out of their mouth. Some people, you know, only communicate passive aggressively. And not everybody does it the same way. And your characters shouldn't all communicate the same way either. You know, some are going to be upfront. Some are going to hide things for various reasons. Some are going to lie, and some are just going to be, you know, passive aggressive for whatever reason. So it's important to think about, yeah, you want to get this information across, but how likely is it that this character says this, that he says it this way, and that, you know, this character receives it that way? What about the idea of 
rhythm and flow and like a kind of musicality to dialogue because I feel like this is something I don't know if I've ever like articulated it you know intellectually but I grew up in punk rock bands and so I have this kind of innate understanding of like you know you can't just go like verse 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 like you kind of have to go yeah. intro verse chorus verse chorus bridge you know outro or whatever and I feel like in dialogue there's something that carries over there and this idea that like there needs to be a rhythm to it, but then you also need to break up the rhythm as well. It can't just become yeah. monotonous back and forth sort of thing. Absolutely. And I think this is where the, um, you know, thinking about everything that is going on in the scene and seeing it very visually comes into play because you're going to be hearing the conversation as well. If you're thinking about it like a movie, you know, you're going to see what they're doing and you're going to start thinking about the way that their words sound. and you know, we can never say it enough as coaches or teachers. You have to read your dialogue aloud. You have to do it uh, because that's the only way to really understand how dialogue sounds when you write it. Um, but you, dialogue, conversations have natural ebbs and flows. You usually start, like, there's usually an awkward start. Even with someone who's your best friend, there's always, like, a warm-up kind of thing where you greet each other you kind of assess where you are emotionally where the other is emotionally what mood you know kind of this meeting is going is the environment appropriate to the conversation you want to have like there's always this sort of sussing out that happens and it's it can be long if you don't know each other it's very short if you've been with someone for for a long time but it does happen you know, you kind of feel out the other person. And then there's this part that is kind of the meat of the conversation. And then there's an outro, you know, like you don't just drop a conversation in the middle. Like, you know, I used it used to drive me insane in movies when people wouldn't say bye when they hung up the phone. Because that's not something you do. That's super rude. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there a conversation has these three parts and you're not going to go through all of the motions obviously because it's going to take forever but you want to mimic that sort of of you know natural kind of rhythm yeah yeah absolutely i'm okay. gonna be sorry i just want to say one last thing there's also going to be pauses you know sometimes especially if you're talking about something that's emotional words have impact and um sorry Joel's talking to me. Words have impact, and you have um, reactions. And sometimes people need time to process these things. And as when you're having a conversation with a friend and you say something really emotional or, or something that you weren't sure, you know, something that causes you to be nervous about something, you're going to wait for the other person's reaction. You're going to watch what they're saying with, with their body language, what they're saying with their expression. Um, so, and that's part of dialogue too. When I was talking about, you know, um, comics that sometimes don't have words, there's still dialogue because we speak not just words, we speak mostly with our body language and our expressions. And this is so often forgotten in dialogue. I love it. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess that gets back to this idea of we don't want chunks of text, we don't want here's the introduction to the scene, here's the dialogue. We really want to mix these things up, right? We want to establish the physical setting. We want to give them some things to do. We also want to pepper in some dialogue, but then we also, in the same way that like a great song is going to have a pause or a moment of silence yeah. or a quiet part, we're going to work that same thing into our scene as well when it comes to the dialogue. Mm -hmm. Love it. Nathan, any other final thoughts on dialogue as a whole? For someone watching this who's perhaps a new writer and they're really excited about writing dialogue or maybe perhaps they're intimidated by it, any advice we can give to them to help bring that dialogue up a level? Um, you know, read. <laughs> Eavesdrop on people. I know that it's it's kind of a weird thing to do, but if you're if you're out and about and people are talking, listen, listen, not, not to what they're saying, uh, but how they're saying it. You know, is is this person does this person mean what they're saying right now? Are they kind of dancing around another point? You know, why are they talking the way that they're talking? Uh, you know, how is this other person responding? What's their body language? You know, take a look at how different people do things. And 
if you like TV and you have TV shows that you love and you think like, wow, this sounds like really great dialogue, sit down and, and ask yourself why. Listen to it. You know, write it out. Seek out the scripts online. You can find these things kind of easily. You know, look at look at the length of these sentences. Look at how they're they're break it break broken apart, sorry. And and how, you know, is there narration in the middle? Is there like, you know, a beat? What do you see while they're talking? And how can you make your writing more, you know, visual? How can you convey a visual sense of a conversation? Absolutely. I love it. Nathan, thank you so much for joining me on the summit. This has been a fantastic conversation about dialogue. Well, I'm happy to I'm happy to, to help as always. <laughs>